Hello and welcome back to Collection Log Completionist, the series where I attempt to fill in a lot of slots in the collection log. In this video we do some pet grinding, check out the new mahogany homes, and reach a pretty nice clue scroll milestone. I hope you all enjoy. So today we get a new mini quest and a new mini game called Mahogany Homes, which comes with eight new collection log slots, which is awesome. I hope they're not too difficult to get. I've heard that it is quite a grind to unlock some of these things, so I may be spending way too much time doing this. This is basically just a new way to train construction. It's supposed to be a little bit cheaper, but much less XP per hour. We're not here for the XP, though. We are here for the carpenter's outfit, the wieldable saw, and all this good stuff. So, let's go do this mini quest at Daddy's home, and then we can uh, start building things. Okay, we finished the mini quest. He gave us this reward crate. What's inside? Ah, some construction materials, some tablets. I know the Falinor tab, so you can go to Falinor and talk to the guy there. But, uh, yeah, very interesting. We're only going to be doing the highest tier of these, which requires mahogany planks and steel bars, I think, which I just bought. They're somewhere in my bank. We're going to go do a couple runs of these. I'll check out what the rewards are like and see what the XP is like. I'm going to probably lose some money doing this, unless the rewards give you a lot of money back, but that's okay. We're just here for collection log slots. Money means nothing. Okay, my first contract was done. That was really easy. It only took like two minutes or so, and we got four points as a reward for that. Also, you get more uh, XP per plank while you're doing this. So if you do not want to spend tons of money, you'll actually get more XP per plank. And if you're an Iron Man and you don't want to go chopping more trees, more XP per plank. Seems pretty decent for those who hate gathering the planks. And with four points per contract, you can see exactly how many contracts it's going to take to do all this. I'm going to add up all these points, see how many farming contracts I'm going to have to do because it looks like it's going to be a lot, especially with those Hosidious blueprints being 2,000. So we are going to have to do 1,219 contracts in total to be able to acquire everything in this shop. I don't know how many points you can get per hour exactly. We're just going to have to jump at it and test it out. But uh, it looks like this might be a long grind. But it, it looks fun. It seems like it's going to be fun at least for the most part. So I've decided to reset my construction XP counter so we can see exactly how much construction XP we get starting from now until we get every single reward in the shop. So I probably won't finish all of this this episode. Obviously, I probably don't feel like grinding this straight out for like 50 hours or whatever. But we'll get to see how, how much XP you get in total. It's probably going to be a lot, honestly. I've got to say, I really commend them for this update. It is incredibly well made. They thought out all the quality of life improvements that Runelite might have done to make this easier, and they just implemented them. Like you see, there's a little red box underneath all the furniture you have to remove and replace. Uh, it puts in your chat here who you need to see and where your contract is. You know, they do tell it to you, but in case you, you know, back out of it too quickly or whatever, it's a nice little reminder. And uh, I mean, overall, it's a very intuitive experience, very easy, very chill, and I enjoy it quite a lot. And we've almost got enough points for our first collection log slot. Also, when you finish up a contract, they will offer you a cup of tea, which will restore all of your uh, run energy. It does use like one game tick, so if you really want to be hyper efficient, you're going to need stamina potions. But, you know, for those of us who just like to chill a little bit, it is nice. There's 28 reward points. Time for our first reward, the supply crate, which is supposed to be able to reimburse you a little bit of money from your work here. Let's confirm and buy it and see what we get inside our supply crate. 46 soft clay, 8,000 gold. That's, <laughs> that's like six mahogany planks. So you definitely don't get your monies back. Unless I got like really unlucky and got like the worst reward or something. Obviously that's possible. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. It's interesting. So I think the next reward we're going to be going for actually is Amy's saw. It is a wieldable saw, which will save me a little bit more inventory space. Let me bring a couple more supplies with me. I don't think it'll let me do like two contracts in a row without banking, but maybe... Okay, we are finishing our last contract for our first hour of Mahogany Homes, 172k XP per hour. Oh god, what did I miss? Oh, the sink. Okay, let's fix the sink up. So, that's about an hour. I could probably get it up to 200,000 XP per hour if I tried a little bit harder, and now that I know the locations of everyone and stuff. But we got 139 plus 25 points. Adds that up to... Uh, wait, let me do this. I can do math properly this time. Oh, 164 points in an hour? Not bad, 164 points, 175k XP. Yeah, it's like just under every 1,000 XP you get is a point. So uh, yeah, not too bad. I could probably get about 200 points per hour if I was trying super hard. And uh, that puts getting all the rewards at like, uh, what was it, like 5,000 points? So that's like 25 hours. 
That's a lot of construction, actually. Oh, God. I take it back. We're actually going to be getting the plank sec next. And we have 350 points, by the way. I've been doing this for way too long. I don't want to talk about it. Let's get the plank sack. I think this will be way more useful than the saw because you can store, I don't know how many, but you could store a lot of planks in this bad boy. I think up to 28, which means I'll be able to do two contracts in a row without banking. Now let's see. Can you right click fill? No, you do have to, you know, pull everything out and then uh, exit the bank and then do this. So yeah, I should be able to do two contracts per inventory now, which, you know, probably saves like seven or eight seconds from having to bank every single time so it's not bad i mean it's not insane but it will help a little bit and that matters when you're doing this for like 25 hours actually i just finished three contracts in one inventory yeah plank sex definitely the way to go for your first one it is so good you just like friggin fill that bad boy up to the brim i think it's yeah 28 right 28 extra planks. It's not really useful for actual construction training, I don't think, but it's very useful for this. I'm gonna nab us one more unique for the collection log from here, and that's gonna be the carpenter boots. Uh, I think I need to take a break from this man. As nice as this is, and it's a pretty good way to train construction, in fact, I might even do it a little bit on the hardcore Iron Man, just because it is kind of chill, kind of fun, and of course, you know, maybe getting the outfit would pay off in the long run, but, uh, it's a little boring sometimes, man. I, I don't know how else to say it. So there is one section of the collection log that I only need one more item in, but it's insanely hard to acquire, and that is the random events tab. I need the stale baguette, which can only be acquired from the mystery box from the Quizmaster random event. And do you want to know what the rate is for it? One in 256. That's right. You'd have to get approximately 256 Quizmaster randoms to even go on drop rate. That's almost an entire year if you get lucky enough to get one of those random events every day. And let me tell you, it takes a long time to get them unless you're insanely lucky. But let me show you. I've been saving up for a little while now. I've got 10 mystery boxes primed up and ready to go. I'm, I mean, genuinely, this took me like a month to get 10 of these. So if you do the math on that, I mean, it's going to take like over two years for me to do 256 mystery boxes. Nevertheless, let's open them up. Like I said, stale baguette is a 1 in 256 chance, so I don't expect to get it. You can actually get some clue scrolls from this. I got nothing twice in a row. That's great. A cabbage, a body rune, a mithril scimitar, a casket. What's in there? 20 coins. Incredible. 500 coins. And lastly, another diamond. Let's price check saving up my mystery boxes for over a month. 9,016 gold. Epic. So I just got another Quizmaster two in one day, which is pretty insane. Now I have a question. Did you guys like when I stacked up a ton of mystery boxes earlier, or would you rather I just open them sporadically like, oh, steel play body? Well, there is our 10th chest of the day and 80 grand hallowed coffins. I think I'm going to shoot for 100 in this video. It's only 20 more, but that is seriously like three hours of hallowed sepulcher, which isn't that long, but this place is very easy to get drained at when you're straight grinding it. So I want to talk about a few things real quick. First off, we are going to be continuing our Seracnus grind for a couple reasons. First off being, we're going for the pet, obviously. Second off being, we're only five elite clue scrolls away from reaching 200 and unlocking our final unique clue reward that you get from uh, reaching certain milestones. Unfortunately, those aren't in the collection log, but it's a cool thing to unlock and it's kind of completionisty, so it almost fits the theme a little bit. And second thing I wanted to talk about is this update to the collection log plugin. Look at it! It's what I've wanted in the log since it first came out. All sections you have fully completed, the text is now green. I know it's such a small thing and it seems so stupid, but look how satisfying it is. It's honestly gorgeous, and it may sound really stupid for me to say, but it's kind of motivating me to go for pets that I wasn't really going to go for. Like Zilliana, you know, it's 1 in 5,000. It takes like 250 hours on average to get this pet. But look how sick it would look if the text was green. Look at the minigames section. This looks gorgeous. Uh, it kind of makes me want to go for the Penance Queen pet. I don't actually want to go for it, but a little bit you know it just looks nice it's a nice way to show off what sections you have completed and uh you know if anybody ever asks me like oh are you missing anything from here i just pop open the collection log boom it's already green so here we are at Seracnus, and I wanted to try something a little interesting. Do you guys remember that alt account I had that I was working on a while ago? Well, let's just say that I got quite burned out working on it, and playing on so many RuneScape accounts at once can get draining. So I decided to drop it for my own sanity, but it actually acquired some decent stats, and I just got its prayer up, and I think it'll be fun to try out duo Seracnus while dolo Seracnus with it, see if I can increase my kills per hour. 
it might be too much effort for what it's worth, but I figure it is worth a shot. So I'm going to try it out for a little bit, maybe one trip or so, and I'll report back with my findings. Okay, it died the first kill. I don't... <laughs> That's a little hectic, man. I don't know how to do this. Okay, that was a fun little experiment, but this boss is an absolute hell to play two accounts on because of the fact that it keeps stunning you and like running away and going this way and that way it is a nightmare to try and keep up with what it's doing so trying that was kind of a massive mistake i think that it'll be easier to dolo bosses like at god wars where one of the accounts is just like tanking you know and my only upkeep on that account is just restoring hp here i gotta switch prayers i gotta re-aggro the boss and i have to do that on both accounts so no i'm good i'll just solo this you are fucking kidding me. We we just got the Seracnus pet. 1991 kill count. <laughs> I was like, dude, why didn't that spider despawn? This game is so bugged. Uh, wow. There it is. I kind of expected to go over the drop rate for this one. I don't know why. I felt it in my bones. But yeah, I don't know, man. I was just trying to get elite clues. I didn't get in a single... That's why I didn't get any elite clues today. I already had one in the bank. I don't want to talk about it. This is supposed to be a happy clip. We just got a pet. We just got a pet. Oh my god. All right, let's go insure this pet. But first, let's look at the collection log. Come on. We got to do it. This is the first time we get to do this. Look at that. Ugh, ugly. Is What is that? Orange? Yellow? Ugh, get it out of here. It's green. Let's go. Three jars of eyes and six Seracnus cudgels plus a clean 90 egg sacs. Let's go insure this thing. Oh my god, I'm so happy. Oh yeah, on our way there, actually I forgot to check something else, you know, we're gonna start doing this now that we've got the uh, cool counter up here. So not only is that in this slot, but also if we go to the all pets log, it obviously fills in there. And look at that, we have three out of the four most recent pets added to the game. Just missing that little nightmare, unfortunately. But yeah, I think, I think I've changed my mind on Nightmare, honestly. After seeing uh, a lot of people grinding it, including Casey and Rice Cup and people like that, it's kind of made me reconsider. I think I will try to grind some Nightmare out in the near future. Take my half a million GP, worst drop I ever got. Yeah, let's drop this pet. Nobody's around. Nobody's going to see this. Oh, look at it. It's beautiful. Let's give it a little chat. So what kind of spider are you? The hive cluster is under attack. I think the attack's over. I already killed your queen. Then we should spawn more overlords. All right, sounds great, dude. Last thing to do with our cute little pet is add him into our menagerie, our little nature house here, to mingle with all of his brothers and sisters. I don't know where where it went but it's it's around here somewhere how many pets do we have in total now is that 17 that's 18 we are almost at 20 pets i don't like to be a pet hunter per se i kind of just roll with the punches but it seems like i'm gonna have to turn into one so uh two more pets until we hit 20 and only five more until we hit halfway to all pets i've also been grinding for the beaver a lot recently as i've mentioned we're at 33 mil wood cutting xp so i don't know if we're dry on that yet or what but uh, i hope we get it eventually one more thing I wanted to show off along the way of the Seragnus grind was how many pages we got. I know you can turn off the page drops, but I thought it'd be a fun little extra thing to see how many we got. Also, why aren't these pages in the collection log? They are kind of unique item. I guess they're tied to a mini quest, so whatever. Here they are. Almost exactly 100 of each. That is very, very weird. If I'd done a couple more Seragnus kills, we would have ended up at exactly 100 each. Now, I know you can trade it in with someone here. Is it Lagosia? Yeah, okay, here. Let's use them on Lagosia. And they give you 1,000 coins for each page. So we made just about 300,000 extra gold by picking those up. A lot of people disable them by talking to Lagosia, but, you know, I made 300k. How, how much gold did you get, huh? Nothing. I have finally mustered up the motivation. Here is our 100th grand hallowed chest for a rune plate body and some soul runes halfway to the drop raid. The sepulcher is still pretty decent. It's still kind of fun, I'm not going to lie. But it is still stressful as all hell. And I've also started going ahead and looting everything on the third floor. I'm not so confident that if I get the ring by the 200 uh, floor drop rate just by looting the grand chest that I will end up having enough marks. So let me show you how many marks I have right now. So I have in total 819 hallowed marks and we need, you know, about 2200 more to be able to afford the acorn and the chest at the end gives 8 to 10 hallowed marks, which means on average we'd get like 900 in the next 100 chests we do, which is obviously 1300 marks short of where we need to be. So I'm going to need to be looting the other chests, which give like what, like five or six on average. So if I could just get like an extra 10 
per run and that makes 19 per run we will be very close to getting the uh, dark acorn by the time we hit the drop rate for the ring so that's the plan for the time being just loot everything on the fifth floor it's leading me with times of about eight minutes every time which does bring my runs down to about seven and a half per hour whereas before i was getting well over eight but it's not too it's not too big of an impact this doesn't exactly have to do with any grind I'm on, but a very curious bit of the area of the Howland Sepulchre, and I just don't know what it's for. There's this huge building, kind of, it looks like a burial site, a tomb or something, after you get through to the Grand Coffin, and you can walk all around it and see the area all behind it, but I cannot find a way in. There are some stairs that say climb down, and then, you know, there's some stairs up here that you climb up here to. Is this accessible, or am I just, like, looking at this is like a little hint or a tease or something like that? If you guys know anything about this, please let me know. I am very curious. Well, it looks like we're going back to my favorite place in the game, Barrows. Not actually hunting for the last Barrows item we need, which, as you all know, is the Torag's Plate Legs. The ever-elusive Torag's Plate Legs. I'm actually going for Elite Clues this time. Like I said, I really want to get to 200 Elite Clues in this video. I don't know if it'll happen because Elite Clues are so damn hard to get. But I'm going to try my darndest, okay? Elite Clues are like 1 in 28 from Barrows or something like that if you kill all the brothers. It's pretty good, and I could do like 18 Barrows runs an hour. Maybe a little bit more with the Strange Old Lockpick. So it should be less than two hours per elite clue on average. We should be able to knock this out in like a day. Wow, like my first chest back, we get a Guthin's War Spear. That's a pretty good item, actually. How much is that worth? Like 750k or something like that? Oh, almost 800k. Not too shabby at all. Obviously not the item we're going for, but really any item that makes me a little bit of extra cash is good because this saying staff castle costs a lot of money, but I think it's going to be worth it for the amount of time we'll save. Yes, let's go. The best item in the game the aram staff can you believe it wasn't wasn't i was that dry on this item i'm not if i wasn't dry i'm not gonna show the log because you guys hate when i check the log oh wait look there's our first elite clue the main goal of coming to barrows so there we go one out of four down three to go all right one more barrows chest then i'm going to bed unless we get the torag's legs then i'm gonna stay up for 400 hours straight doing theory of blood nah it was worth a shot Oh boy, a Darox play body. Another good item, actually. 1.3 million GP. Not too bad. I don't want to complain. It's obviously a dupe. I never really thought I'd come to the point where I want Torax plate like so bad, but here we are. Uh, almost 1,700 kill count, too. Oh my goodness. I wasn't even recording, but we got another item. Would you believe it? And it's the best. I mean, you can already see the chest value. It's an Arab's hood. <laughs> Ah, not exactly the best item and not exactly the one I'm going for, but, uh, it's something. Yes, that is what I like to see. That is the bonus I needed to keep myself going. Our next elite clue, honestly, when you're hunting the elite clues, it makes barrows a little bit better because when you get them, you're not disappointed. You're actually a bit excited. Another cool milestone, 1700 barrows chests. Ah, it's beautiful. I really hope I do not make it to 2,000 Barrows chests. As cool as that would be, it'd be a nice little flex. I'm good. I'd rather not. So I think we'll do a few more runs here at Barrows, hopefully edge out some more Elite Clues, but I might hop over to a different place for Elite Clues. I mean, doing Barrows all day. It's kind of burning me out of the game. I really haven't been playing as much as I usually do. Jesus, settled. It's that easy. Just get the Guthans pieces. I can't believe you milked that for a whole video. Can you? Oh, so we're like four? four or five pieces in so far and uh, none of them are Torags so maybe it's a sign we should just we should get out of here I wish I had been recording that chest it was literally just 2,958 coins every single roll went to coins I have never seen a Barrow's chest that is just coins it looked hilarious so a very nice person in my YouTube comments gave me a little piece of advice that I cannot believe I didn't realize I've been using the crystal axe without the Elven Signet this whole time. The Elven Signet is a ring you get from Crystal Implings, and it gives you a 10% chance not to use a charge on Crystal Equipment every time you use it. That's insane. That literally just means all the charges on this will last 10% longer, so I'll get 850 extra chops, basically, just by wearing this ring. And it's so cheap nowadays. It's only 800,000 gold. Back when I got this on, like, episode friggin' who knows, like, 14 of Collection Law Completionist, this thing was worth, like, tens of millions of gold, so... If you're using crystal equipment, buy this. It's so cheap and so worth it. Well, I know this is a little random. Don't judge me, all right? It's 50 kill count at Vetion. Uh, I decided, you know what? I kind of want to relearn Vetion. I haven't killed this boss in a long time. I got super lucky on the Ring of the Gods. I 
think I got it at like 40 something kill count from this boss so yeah a little bit spoon fed here and I figure it's time to properly grind it a little bit more it's a super sick pet probably one of the coolest looking pets in the game not much else like it so we'll do a little bit of Etienne needless to say the biggest reason I'm here is because he has a 1 in 50 drop rate of an elite clue when you're wearing the ring of wealth imbued and the boss is pretty chill plus I'm on the total level world so I do not get disturbed very often no pkers have come after me yet knock on wood real quick to uh, ensure that it stays that way but he's got some pretty good normal drops as well we'll see how it goes if i end up hating it we'll uh we'll go kill venonatus or something that boss is pretty chill as well hey there's the best drop we've gotten so far i think magic seed I, 100k I mean, it's, it's, it's good I also got a great piece of advice, not from a video, but the YouTube comments section on a Vetion guide to bring bones to Peach's tablets. It's kind of big brain, actually. If you run out of food by messing up or maybe you get attacked or something and you run out of a little bit of food, you can pick up the bones from the Hellhounds and from Vetion and use bones to Peach's to heal up instead of uh, using brews and stuff like that. It's a nice way. It's, it's a good method. Uh, I finally got someone that attacked me. It was right at the end of a trip. I'd done, like, seriously, like, 10 plus kills. So, I don't know how much loot he just got, but I lost my only rune defender. It's a disaster, so I need to, like, actually go get more defenders before I go back to uh, Vetion. And, let's see, we got to 93 kill count, so that's pretty decent stopping point, I guess. We did just about 50 kills, no elite clues, unfortunately. So, we're going to have to go somewhere else. Maybe Gauntlet? I don't know. Okay, that has got to be one of the nastiest non-unique rewards I've ever seen Three rune halberds and two dragon halberds. That's over 400k in just those normal drops. Not bad at all. All right, I think this is the most gauntlet I've ever done in one day. I don't remember what I started at. Maybe it was maybe it was 100, so maybe we've done like 28. I don't know. Let's open our final rewards chest and nothing too significant. Yeah, I'm not ashamed to admit I have died a few times today. I got some earth runes. All right, I'm pretty proud of those. But let's price check our total loot from the gauntlet in this session. 3.8 mil, plus if I make these crystal shards into divine super combats, it'll be like 1.5, 1.6 mil. So add that together. So we're 5 mil made. In one day at the gauntlet, not too shabby, but seriously, I can't stay here any longer. This place drives me insane. Look at this alpha male gear setup. You might be thinking, what the hell? Has he finally lost it? And honestly, yeah, I have finally lost it. I want elite clues so bad. We just need two more to hit the 200 milestone, and I'm just dry on elite clues everywhere. I did like 50 Vetion kills, no elite clue. Did like 25 uh, gauntlet, no elite clue, and so... I'm going to Lava Dragons. I have literally never killed Lava Dragons before in my entire life, and I probably never will again after this, but if you have the Ring of Wealth imbued on, their elite clue drop rate's like 1 in 125, and these things die pretty dang fast with the uh, get up I've got on right now, plus imbued heart. So I think I'm actually going to go grind Lava Dragons for these last two clues, and I think they're pretty decent money as well. I believe the Lava Dragon bones are noted since I have the Wildy Elite Diaries done, so we'll give it a test. We'll try it for a couple hours, hopefully get our two elite clues and be done with this nightmare. So I've been here for about 15 minutes and we have gotten 25 kills so it really does look like it's going to be about an hour and 15 minutes uh, per clue on average. I mean it's not terrible. It's probably one of the fastest ways to get clues in the game. Probably the only thing that comes close is barrows or dragon implings which I might actually try just for one clue. I'm not going to drop 8 mil per clue on the regular though. Oh yes, there we go, an elite clue scroll, that is such a great sight to see. Only one more to go after this, and uh, you know, it only took us just under 20 minutes, so I'll get back to the bank and price check the loot we made from this trip, and you know, see if it is actually decent money. Okay, here's the loot from our like 15 minute trip at Lava Dragons. We got just under 400k in loot, most of the loot coming from the noted Lava Dragon Bones and the Lava Skill Shards I made from grinding them down with Pestle and Mortar. So, yeah, I could see this being like 1.5 mil an hour. You probably got to take away the money you spend on Trident Charges. You still probably profit a decent bit, all whilst getting these Elite Clues. So it's worth it if you're some kind of weirdo that actually enjoys doing Elite Clues or something. Huh. That's weird. That, <laughs> that doesn't look like an Elite Clue. Is, is Dragon Spear on their drop table? I don't think it is. I think that's still really rare. Ah, uh, well... Yes, there's my clue. Oh, I'm so happy that I didn't go very dry here at the Lava Dragons. Much respect to you humble dragons. I appreciate that. Now, if I make it out of the Wildy safe, you guys will be seeing an Elite Clue opening clip any second now. There it is, my friends. Five Elite Caskets ready to go. Let's check the Elite Log real quick. 23 out of 98. If we could eke out an item in these last five, that would be absolutely beautiful. First one. 
is a master clue. I expected nothing less. Let's go. Five masters. I'm calling it. First master clue down. Five more to go, I'm guessing, from all of these elites. No, but we got a top hat. Unfortunately, I am positive that is not new, but we will put it on for the rest of this clue opening because it looks so dang good. Another masterless clue, but there is a master clue. 64 souls and 64 blood. Hmm. Okay, another master down, and now it is just one more elite, and of course, like I said, we're gonna wear the top hat because it's good luck. As you will see here, elite number 200, we get another master clue. Okay, and of course, the big boy reward from the elites, the heavy casket. Check it out. Probably one of the coolest and dumbest fashionscape items in the entire game. We can walk around looking like we are carrying around a clue casket, and unfortunately... We cannot open it. I really do wonder if there's some secret way to open this, but I guess we'll never find out because we're going to spend 20 years doing this master clue. Okay, there we are. Three master clues in five elites. I was really joking when I said five clues incoming, but it looks like I wasn't that far off. So we are at 28 out of 94 rewards in the master clue log. Let's see if we can nab anything new today. No unique. No unique. And a gilded dragonite body. Okay. Okay, like, I haven't had a Master Unique in quite a long time, and of course we get Gilded. I mean, seriously, are you kidding me? Is that just a Master Unique? Or No, that's also in Elites. It's not in Hearts, though, is it? No, it's not. So, there is two Collection Log slots filled in with our fifth piece of Gilded. Am I right? One, two, three, four, five? Yeah, that's our fifth piece of Gilded. I don't know what to say. I really don't know what to say. You guys know how it goes with me and Clue Scrolls. We're really tight. And, uh, yeah, I'm really glad I did this and got up to 200 elite clues in the log. What's next? I don't know. Probably another piece of Third Age. Maybe Druidic. I'll go for another Druidic piece. So, anyways, I think it's pretty safe to wrap things up now. A pet and gilded in one video. If that doesn't satisfy you guys, I really don't know what else will. You'll have to let me know in the comments what I have to do for the next video, if that was not enough. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. I know it's been a while since I've done a little bank value recap and that's because i had to give out that huge twisted bow split on my hardcore and i kind of don't like looking at the fact that my bank is still down quite a lot of money although i really am not sitting out here complaining with four bill to play with anyways i love you guys thank you so much for the support you know how to support the channel drop a like subscribe follow my twitter blah 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 anyways i appreciate you guys i'll see you in the next video where we will get two pets all right that's the deal two pets i'll see you then goodbye Thank you.